Hello my friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to bring you my June art journaling spread. I'm super excited to be with you guys today. I have so much that I want to share with you guys. Um, we're going to just chat it up today. So I hope you're going to be um, as excited as I am to just kind of dive in and have a good time. So I'm going to be working in my art journal. If you'd like to art journal along with me, you can go ahead and grab your supplies. If you'd rather do some other kind of crafts, you know, card making, coloring, knitting, baking, even if you'd rather do some exercise or whatever, um, or you can just hang out, grab a cup of coffee, and we'll just sit and chat together and have a great time while we create something amazing. So I'm going to go through everything that I'm hoping to use today real quick. Um, I have my art journal, of course. Then I have these papers here from the Stamperia Lady Vagabond Lifestyle. I really want to use one of these bookish pages today, and we'll get into why in uh, just a few minutes, but um, there's some uh, really beautiful book images, like this stack of books here, this gorgeous uh, bookshelf, there's this girl reading over here, we've got lots of cool things in this pad that I want to try to use, so that's the pattern paper that I'm going to be using today. I also have some washi tape as usual, so I have my regular one, I think I've used this on every single art journaling page so far. Um, this is absolutely art journaling for beginners, I have only been art journaling since January and I do one a month, so this is going to be number six. So I have this one here as well that has some vintage adver advertisements on it. I have some old book pages here and other advertisements. This one has a little stack of books that I thought was cool. And then I have a page out of a dictionary. I also have a vintage looking library card pattern, uh, piece of paper here. And then this little page that says the little book that I thought was fun. I also have a washi tape sticker of a stack of books and some little vintage tags that I thought were in that same color palette. And then I have my Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens that I thought I might use today. These are brand new. I've never used them before. So I thought those, thought those would be fun to break out. And then I always like to try to incorporate something from my own life. So this month I wanted to incorporate this little directory and map of a bookstore that I just went to visit this past Sunday with my husband. We had an absolutely wonderful time. I'm going to chat all about that trip um, as we get into it. But for now, I'm going to set everything off to the side, prep my work surface with a uh, just a, a mat, and then we will jump into the art journal spread. All right, so I have laid down my Tonic Studios craft mat just to protect my work surface since I also use this to film my card making videos, this um, aqua colored background. So we're going to open up to the June spread. Let's see here, that was May. So here we are for June. And I'm just going to grab a little bulldog clip here to help get this page to lay flat a bit more. So we'll just add that right in the corner there just to add some weight to that end. And then I'm going to start by laying some washi tape down in the center just to protect my spine so that any mediums that I use won't leak onto the other pages. And also I'm working in a perforated notebook so um, the pages are made to be able to tear out easily and I don't want my book to fall apart when it gets wet so I want to keep mine together. So I'm just going to take some washi tape as always and I'm going to add that to the center of my book here and just line that. It doesn't have to be on there perfectly straight but just uh, enough to cover that spine a bit and it's a little bit tricky there to tear so I'm going to grab my scissors and I'll just trim off that part because because it's sticky I don't want it to stick to the pages um, behind them. So just trim that off a bit. There we go, that's good enough. Alright, 
And we'll stick a little bit more down there because I do like that handwritten font and I think it goes nicely with our book theme. Right now I am just building up layers, so just sticking things wherever, no rhyme or reason. Anywhere that I want to go, you know, anywhere I want them to go. So, how have you guys been since the last art journaling video? It feels weird because I know I post so many other videos throughout the month, but this is the one where I really get to sit and chat with you guys, or stand and chat, I'm standing. Um, and I just, I look so forward to these because I just feel like I'm with my friends and we're hanging out together and having a good time. And I know you guys are hanging out with me when I do the card making videos as well, but those are more instructional and not so chatty. So I just, I don't know, I really like getting to do this. I think it's lots of fun to be able to interact a little bit more and just talk more loosely, I guess, more um, about my life. So I put that little R there because my last name starts with an R. I thought that would be a fun detail. We'll see if that ends up staying on the page. And we'll stick another one down here. I like to try to balance things out. So up here, you know, it creates a balance having another one down at the bottom. And let's see. Maybe up here. Just adding a few little layers here. I don't want to get too carried away today with all of the stuff because the images that I plan on using, um, which I think I'm going to use this big bookshelf that is really large. It's going to take up a, a vast majority of this spread. So anything, um, you know, kind of in the center is going to get covered up. So uh, I don't mind sticking things down. Like I said, I don't mind things getting uh, covered up and stuff like that. I want those layers because that adds texture to your page. But I also, you know, I don't want to stick anything down that I absolutely 100% know is going to get covered up completely if I want it to be there. So just kind of sticking more to the outer edges there using a little bit of this dictionary page. And I am gluing these down with some Elmer's craft glue. This is the extra strength craft bond and I really really do like this. I've been using it for quite some time now and really enjoying it. And I apologize for any noises that you guys are going to hear today. It is the first day of summer vacation. Um, for my, well, my youngest, because my middle son graduated high school last night. Um, that was super exciting. So, yeah, um, I only have one high schooler left, which is kind of crazy. But anyway, his last day of school was yesterday, and so um, everybody's home today. Uh, well, except my husband. All three of my sons are home today. I have three um well, they're not teenagers anymore. One of them is over 20, so, uh, well, he is 20. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, I have three kids and they are all in this house right now. And today was really the only day that worked out for me to be able to film this. So I went ahead and asked them <laughs> to please try to keep it down for a little bit, you know, kind of I'm filming a little bit later in the day today so that they didn't have to be like really quiet starting off in the morning. Well, this will probably get covered up, but that's okay. Like I said, it's about the layers and just adding things here and there. So I'm just gonna go with it. Um, let's see, maybe we'll do some of these tickets. So I've asked them to be quiet, but you know how it is with boys. They uh, don't always um, succeed, I guess, <laughs> especially with brothers. So yeah, but yeah, my middle son graduated high school last night. That was super exciting. Um, my oldest son graduated in 20, uh, 2021, no, 
2020, two years ago. So he did not get to have a graduation because of COVID. They actually held it at the drive-in and they just put the pictures up on the screen at the drive-in and everybody had to kind of stay in their cars to avoid, you know, spreading anything and just social distance. So it was very, very different and I did not know what to expect. I don't think I'd ever been to a high school graduation except for my own. At, well, and my my brother and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so that was really, really cool to see and really proud of him for uh, all that he's accomplished. So I'm sure he's gonna do great things. So let's go ahead and stick this sticker down. And then I think I want to get to my map because I wanna make sure I have some room for that where it's gonna show. And this washi tape sticker, you know, if it ends up getting covered, that's okay because I have that whole seed on the pattern paper. So um, let's see. Maybe we'll stick it down here. And I like that these washi tape stickers are semi-transparent. So you can see some of the prints from underneath. I like that. I think that really adds to the layers and gives it a cool effect. All right, so where is my map? Here we go. So last Sunday, I asked my husband if he would take me to Columbus, Ohio. Um, it is almost four hours away from where I live, but I had just heard about this really cool bookstore called The Book Loft of German Village, and I really wanted to go to there. Um, they have 32 rooms of books, you guys. It was amazing and my husband is not a book lover by any means but he is German he's from Germany and you know born and raised in Germany German is his first language and so I was like oh it's in German village you know um, maybe that will entice him enough that he'll <laughs> take me <laughs> four hours away on a Sunday afternoon um, so anyway, he's a great, wonderful husband, and he agreed to go. So we went to the book loft, and oh my gosh, if you ever want to get lost in an absolute labyrinth of books, this is the place to go. It is so amazing. It's like all these twists and turns and little alcoves and rooms within rooms and narrow hallways all full of books. I mean, it was absolutely incredible. Honestly, it was just the coolest place. Um, I love bookstores. I really, really love bookstores. And if, if I could, like my absolute dream would be to travel across the country going from bookstore to bookstore, like just really cool ones. I would be like in heaven. I would love that. Uh, I think it would be amazing. And uh, yeah, I'd be all about that. But unfortunately, I'm married to a man who doesn't really love to read. Uh, he will read occasionally. And actually, he bought three books and I only I bought four. So me being a crazy book lover and him not being a book lover, I thought that was pretty good. He was actually only gonna get two, but I saw a book that I thought he would like. Occasionally he will read one. He just really doesn't have a lot of time. You know, he's a nurse at a cancer center and he is always busy, you know. He just doesn't have downtime to read. But I saw a book that I read a few summers ago, I wanna say maybe two summers ago. And while I was reading it, I thought, oh, my husband would like this one. Like this would be a one a book that would be up his alley and so I showed it to him I said just take a look at this and see if it would interest you and if it would I'll buy it for you and treat it you know treat you to it for taking me I actually treated him to all three of the books but anyway um, but he ended up like reading the back and a few pages while he was waiting for me and he was really intrigued by it so I decided to get that for him and so now, I, and by the way, just in case you're curious, um, it was The Waterkeeper by Charles Martin. Um, I read that a few 
summers ago, like I said, and it just kind of um, seemed like it might be up his alley. It's like a little bit of like the born ultimatum and, you know, the born identity, like a little bit of a guy like that, you know? So I thought that might be something he would like. So yeah, I got four books, he got three. So I thought that was pretty, pretty good. But yeah, German Village in Columbus, Ohio is really an incredible place. Um, the streets are just full of these old brick houses and there's like wrought iron gates and um, they're all like lined with flowers and the trees are just leafy and kind of shading the sidewalks and it's just absolutely peaceful and beautiful. It was a beautiful June Sunday afternoon. It was the perfect time of year to be going there and we absolutely loved it. He really wasn't sure that he wanted to go in the first place. Like if it weren't for me, he wouldn't have gone but he ended up really loving it there as well and um there's a lot of houses but there's also like um there's a german restaurant called schmidt's sausage house where we went for lunch there's also a schmidt's fudge house we didn't go in there you know i'm diabetic um but and he's not really into fudge so um we didn't go in there but it looked really cute we walked by Running out of spaces, goodness. Uh, let's go right. Nope, that's going to get completely covered up. And I kind of wanted that title to show up. So let's make it smaller so I have room for it somewhere. And we'll stick it maybe, maybe here. That's kind of cool. Like almost like it's the, um, the borrower's, like the title of the book on the library card. So that's kind of cool. All right. And then I have this little bit. <laughs> My fingers are so full of glue. Um, okay, what else? Okay, there was a bakery there, a French style bakery called Pistachia Vera, and they had gorgeous macarons. And I love macarons, but they I'm really picky about them. Like my first one I ever had was in Germany in Heidelberg in this tiny little bakery down a side street and it was blueberry and it was amazing. And then I had a few in the States at different places and I was really not impressed. I was really kind of disappointed with them. So ever since then I've been like, Ugh, I mean, I like them, but I don't know if it's gonna be a good one. So let's see, well, hmm, I'm really running out of places. This is getting tricky because I have some big stuff. Let's do. But anyway, so we went in there and, um, you know, the macarons are really small and my husband and I decided to split two. We had one then and then one like that evening we split one. So it wasn't too bad and actually didn't raise my blood sugar. So I was totally fine. But we got a raspberry one because that's, his favorite flavor and then we got a mango and they were so good oh my gosh they were perfect macarons they were like super like crispy on the outside and then absolutely like marshmallowy and soft on the inside with that beautiful jam oh they were so good they were really good um so yeah if you ever get a chance to go to the german village in columbus ohio i highly recommend it and the book loft you could get lost in there for hours, you guys. It was so amazing. I mean, um, it w I would say it's tight because there's like, they, they cram so many books in that place. And, um, you know, so there's like narrow walkways and there were a decent many people there. So you were kind of constantly saying, excuse me, you're kind of sidling up to the bookshelves to make room for people to pass behind you but I was loving it. I did not have any issues with that. I don't know if I'm gonna use this one. Maybe I'll just, I don't know. I like these books, but I don't know if there's gonna be a place to use it that's gonna end up showing. I don't know. Well, let's, Whatever, if it gets covered up, it gets covered up. I'm not gonna be precious about it, you know? So let's just take the books because that's the part that um, intrigued me. But yeah, I think we were there 
the in German Village for five and a half hours, and that was plenty of time. We also walked down to a park where there's some beautiful trees and a playground with some kids playing. That was really close to the German restaurant. Um, so that was really cool. You know what, maybe I can't use the whole thing. So maybe we just stick some of that in here. Okay, and then maybe over here we'll have some. But yeah, it was a beautiful day. I'm so glad that I was able to convince him to go because it was seriously like the best time and I absolutely needed it. I had been working really hard lately as I always do. You know, anybody who works for themselves, I mean, I also have a part-time job aside from YouTube, but anybody who works for themselves gets it. Like you, just, your work day never ends because your your home office is here you know so I always end up doing stuff and you know I had a couple of nights where I was working until one in the morning even though I'd been working since 11 in the morning that day with only a break to make dinner I just I'm you know I'm like that I'm kind of a workaholic sometimes and I need to stop um, having such an imbalance in my life so it was really good to get away for an entire day. I did no work that day at all. Um, we didn't get home until, we left at like 5.30. No, we got up at 5.30. We left at seven in the morning and we didn't get home until like, I wanna say nine at night or something like that. Um, but it was absolutely a wonderful day. It was so nice to get away for a day. This is um, right on the seam, which is actually a good thing because it'd be too big to use as one whole piece. I'm just gonna tear this out carefully and then tear this side out. And then I'm gonna trim these out, fussy cut. So let's see here. Let's start with the bookcase because I know I want to use that. So at first I kind of struggled about using this as my June spread because I was like, oh, I should be doing something about gardening or, um, you know, just like summer. But um, I did kind of a spring theme last month. And honestly, to me, June has always been like because it's the end of the school year, it's full of like summer reading and trips to the library when my kids were smaller. And um, I had this thing where every single afternoon I would tell my kids it was quiet reading time and for a complete half an hour, um, everybody had to go find a book and go wherever they wanted to go. It could be anywhere in the house or you know, outside or whatever, but um, they had to read for whatever time period I set on the clock. It was usually a half an hour because, you know, they were younger and had a hard time being quiet. Although I will be honest, you guys, there were times when I saw the alarm about to go off and I would like hit snooze for a little bit longer because um, they were too little to really pay attention. <laughs> just to give me a little bit of extra time. I mean, you guys know I loved being a mom. I still love being a mom. Um, but I just love reading and it's so wonderful to try to foster that love in your children as well. I want to keep a little bit of the carpet. I am going to use this kitty even though I don't have a cat because I'm allergic. I, oh, I've had an animal on every single page so far, uh, oh my gosh, I had to make sure that I was still recording you guys because um, my camera shuts off every 10 minutes automatically. Um, I, do I want to cut around the cat or just straight up? Hmm. I think I'm going to cut straight up after this like baseboard. And then if I need to trim it down later, I will. I've had an animal on every page and I wish this were a dog because I'm, a dog person. I do love cats, but I'm allergic so I can't have one. Um, but I couldn't resist not having an animal on a page because 
I just love animals so much. Like, seriously, animals and books are like my two favorite things in the whole world. Um, and there was already an animal on this page, so why not use it? And plus, don't you love, like, I'm sorry, I, th I know I'm talking about books so much, and there's probably some of you here today who aren't book lovers and probably, like, aren't <laughs> that into this conversation, and I'm really sorry. I just seriously am passionate about books. So, um, anyway, if you've ever been to a bookstore that has a book a bookstore cat. I've been to a few. Um, I've also been to a really cool bookstore in uh, Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia, and they, that one had, or no, wait, it was in Savannah, right? Um, e. Shavers, I'm pretty sure it was called. Anyway, they had a couple books, bookstore cats there, and then um, in my hometown, we used to have an independent bookstore that the, the owner retired, and so they closed it. But they also had a cat named Diggory. Um, Diggory is the name of the professor in the Chronicles of Narnia, in case you weren't aware. Mm, I think I am going to trim this out around his tail and just leave the, the carpet underneath. Um, anyway, so... I think bookstore cats are so much fun because I love cats. Like I said, I just can't have one because I'm allergic. And honestly, I'm fine around them. I just can't pet them. If I pet them, my eyes get so irritated and my sinuses go nuts. So as long as I'm not petting them, it's fine. But like who wants to have a, a pet that you can't touch? Like that's no fun. I couldn't do that. Then. And then I'd just be sick all the time. I really like this strip here, so I think I'm going to leave that so I can maybe tear that up and use that. And then I definitely want this stack of books here. So I'm going to trim this out as well. But um, yeah, by the way, if you're interested in seeing any of my photos from the German Village trip and from the book loft, they're actually on my bookish Instagram. I, I do have two Instagram accounts. I have my Christy Gets Crafty where I share all of my card making. And then I have uh, christiana.royling.writes and that is my bookish Instagram. And I shared pictures of that trip on there. So if you're curious, you can head over there and check them out. Um, they're in a couple different posts because you know how Instagram only lets you share like 10 pictures at a time. So I did, a, did it in a few little posts. But yeah, there was like a lot of cool little details there as well. Like uh, we were walking down this side street towards the German restaurant and um, along the way there was just like so many neat things things to see like just personality you could see like the owners of the houses and stuff like um one of them had these really cool stone lions at the top of their gates that reminded me of the lions in front of the new york library and then um which i've never been to by the way i've been to new york city but um only as a teenager with a group where I didn't get to choose what I did and the next time was just to fly out of there so um, and it was absolutely like a torrential downpour we were there only for a couple hours overnight and we didn't get to see anything like nothing because the weather was so bad which was really disappointing um, but anyway so I've never been to that library but anyway um, what was I talking about oh yeah the cool little details so there was the stone lions on the pillar and then there was another little house that the tree in front of their house it had like this little gnome house as if the gnomes were living inside the tree trunk it was so cute and I, I have a picture of that on the instagram as well and then um another house had uh it was like a little miniature dollhouse that was a complete replica of the house it was in front of and I was so intrigued that I had to get closer and see what it was. And it was a little free library, which I also love those things. So um, I had to take a peek. And then I found two more books inside. Oh my gosh, it was such a good day, you guys. I absolutely loved it, loved it, loved it. Honestly, it was just the best. 
All right, so here is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I want to have this bookshelf here. The only thing that I'm concerned about is whether or not I can really get this part to adhere in the crevice of this spine. But I think I'm going to try because I think if I if I put it back too far, it's going to look weird. Maybe if I do it like that with just a little bit of a crack. I'm just worried that over time as I open and close the book that it will get stuck and um, not be able to... Uh, not not get stuck, get cracked, I'm sorry. Um, I'm thinking and talking at the same time and then my words are not coming out correctly. Um, I think I might put it down toward the bottom here though. And then I'm thinking somewhere over here to have the extra books and the kitty. And it looks like the kitty needs to be trimmed down because otherwise it looks like she's sitting on a pillow. So forget about that rug. Um, and then there was one other thing that I wanted to use. So let me just think in something like this or maybe the cat on this side. And then um, there was one other image that I wanted to use because on the top of my bookshelf I have a vintage typewriter and I actually also have a collection of inkwells. I collect vintage vintage inkwells so I wanted to use those as well. I really hope that um, this isn't boring you guys seriously I am doing so much fussy cutting uh, but I have so much I wanted to share with you guys today I'm sorry I was just really excited about that trip. It was so much fun. Um, so hopefully this video isn't gonna be super, super long because I know like leaving all this stuff in can get lengthy, but I will try my best not to take too long to cut this out. Um, yeah, anyway, I collect two things basically. Um, vintage typewriters and vintage inkwells because I'm a writer or used to be anyway I kind of stopped writing for the time being it was just getting to be too much with um, the time in my kids life right now um, I was just needing to be more present for you know, soccer games and everything. It was the last two years for my last two kids and I really wanted to be present for that and it was getting to be too much for me to do everything. So something, I knew something had to give and it was either going to be YouTube or writing and honestly, I really struggled. I didn't know what the right thing was gonna be to do. Um, but I ended up, I kind of like this frame and everything. I almost wonder if I should just cut that out. Let's try it and see. If not, I can always trim it down smaller. Um, something had to give in my life. And like I said, I was between giving up YouTube, which, uh, would have been hard because I... The main reason I do it, you guys, is really for the relationships. I really have become very fond of a lot of you and those of you who like leave comments constantly on my channel and you've become kind of like a friend to me and I just felt like I wasn't ready to let go of that. So the only other option was to give up writing, which I've been writing since I was 12 years old and it's been like the passion of my life. So it was really, really hard to do, but uh, it just seemed like I had to. Um, something had to go. And so that's what I kind of have taken a break from writing now for um, over a year. It's been over a year and that was really hard, like I said, but um, I don't regret it. 
because it gave me more time to just be present in my kids' lives. And I don't know. I don't think that's going to work. I don't think that's going to work. I'm going to have to cut it out. Okay. Um, yeah, I just needed to be there for my kids. Um, I don't know how many of you guys know, like, my history. I, I think I've touched on it in the past before, but, you know, before I started art drilling, I didn't share that much because it wasn't the right time and place, you know? I'm trying to instruct you guys on how to color with your Copic markers and how to create cards for people and it's just not like a, a sharing time like this can be but anyway I my mom left when I was 12 years old and I grew up with just my dad and my brothers and then my brothers kind of came and went throughout my life as well sometimes they lived with my mom sometimes they lived with other friends and stuff um, so I had you know I didn't have her really in my life growing up and I just did not want the same thing for my children I needed to be present okay I like that better all right I think I'm ready to settle on those but I know I want to use more of these bits of pattern paper so I think I'm going to adhere some of these down because I want them to look like they're behind all of these elements so I think I'm going to do that next and just kind of start to fill things in oh dear I'm really worried that this one is going to end up being like crazy long and um, people are going to see the timestamp at the bottom and just be like, no, I'm not doing that. So we'll see how many people actually watch these videos. Um, but anyway, it is what it is, right? So um, let's see. I like to have a little bit of a torn edge. I really like the this scrap here because uh, my whole house is shades of gray and aqua. So it just reminds me of my own house and how I've decorated as well. So we've got the little bit of aqua down here and then all the books, which I have several bookshelves and my youngest son just built me a new one in woodshop class. So I'm very excited to have a new bookshelf to fill with more books. Um, it, we still have to stain it. My, my husband did the first coat, but it needs a second coat of stain because um, it's not, it's still too light. And then we have to do the poly and stuff, but I'm very excited to very soon have another bookshelf to fill. And I really love vintage books as well. So I love that there's so many of these really cool vintage looking books. I absolutely adore this one here with the blue flowers on the spine. I think that's stunning. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to start just kind of tearing and, and filling things in here. Oop. Helps if you take the cap off. <laughs> um, so yeah, now I feel like I've talked super fast and um, run out of the things to say so hopefully not hopefully <laughs> hopefully I won't just sit here and silence the rest of the video which I don't think so uh that would be hard for me oh uh, well not necessarily I I do, I am uh definitely an introvert I have no problem being alone I don't get bored by myself I'm not a person who really ever gets bored that is just like not a word in my vocabulary um, I'm always so shocked when my children tell me they're bored. I'm like, how? How is that possible? I do not have the time to do all the things that I would love to be doing, let alone uh, the things I should be doing. Like, I just, boredom is not a word that I am familiar with. Uh, no. <laughs> if I'm bored, I'm going to read a book or, you know, go sit outside and listen to the birds or do something. Like, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem being alone or, um, you know, I don't mind my own company at all. So that's not an issue for me. 
I'm gonna cover up some of that because I just feel like there's too much of it. I just want a little bit, a little bit showing through here and there. Not necessarily something that you can completely read. So let's stick that under there. And there we've got the shades of aqua coming through. something over here just so it kind of looks like the wallpaper behind my fingers are getting so sticky it always happens I get I can't help it like I just get my fingers in the way so they end up just getting really gluey but I like doing things with my hands I've always been somebody who in ooh hmm I like the back side too, but I think I am going to use the blue side. So yeah, I've just always been somebody who liked working with their hands. I was always doing crafts and things when I was younger, just making little decorations for my room or I don't know, just anything. Making Christmas ornaments. I loved making Chris homemade Christmas ornaments stuff like that so I guess this was a natural progression <laughs> in my life I never really thought about like being a crafter well I don't think I knew as a kid that being a crafter was like something people did so you know there was no YouTube when I was a kid so yeah I'm that old sad to say but um, yeah I Kind of just fell into this I don't know it all started with um, a notebook I wanted to make a altered notebook because I'm a writer and I love writing and I love taking notes and just adding little um, recipes jotting down things little observations or um, if I hear a really cool name of somebody I like to jot that down I have a whole list of of names that I keep and I so I, I always like to carry like little notebooks I still to this day carry little notebooks in my purse um, but I jot down names on my phone on my notes app but um, yeah uh, so I wanted to alter a, a composition notebook and I did that and somebody I made some for gifts and people asked me how I made them and I was like um, okay here's how but it's kind of hard to explain it would be a lot easier if I could just like show you so that is how my YouTube channel was born my first video was not a card making video but uh, altering a mini composition notebook so yeah kind of funny how life just takes you down these twists and turns and some of them you just wouldn't expect at all but they end up being really cool things that happen nonetheless so yeah it'll be interesting to see what happens with my children because they're all you know we're all kind of in a they're all in a transition stage you know my oldest is in college my middle son who just graduated still isn't quite sure what he wants to do yet so he's just working while he figures it out um, and my youngest still has one more year to go but yeah it's just kind of interesting isn't it life just can be so unexpected and yet bring so much joy that you wouldn't have, you know, anticipated happening in your life. You know what? My fingers are getting so sticky that I can't even, like literally, I can't get stuff off my fingers 
So I think I'm going to go wash my hands really quick and then I'm going to come back and we'll finish this up. All right, I'm back with clean hands and I still have some more of this that I want to use. I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to use this girl because I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. She's definitely not dressed in a way that represents how I dress, although her top is really cool. I don't know that I've ever worn purple striped tights, but I would definitely lay like that and read. I mean, I would lay in any position and read, so I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it'll be an unexpected turn once again that I wasn't planning. I don't know. I really do like this with the aqua in here, so I think I might want more of that. Let's add that. So like I said, I'm just filling in little scraps here and there kind of around the the focal images, trying to fill in some more of the background and just kind of give it that vintagey looking vibe. Hmm. Maybe just part of that then. I don't want to cover up what's left of this map, and I also don't want to really cover up completely all those books. So maybe I better not stick anything there. So let's go on this side. We have quite a bit more on this side that could be added. Let's see here. And there. And then... Maybe something in there, just kind of layering stuff up. And it doesn't have to fit, you know, like a puzzle piece. It can layer on top of stuff too. Like I'm covering part of this and part of this and that's fine because that just adds more interest, you know. Gives a little more, more little cracks and crevices and, and things of that nature. Okay. So maybe this piece, right in there, and then I think I want more of like a border up here, so maybe some of this. That right there, and what else do we have? Maybe some more of this this gray on this side. But yeah, I am very excited for summer. Um, it's a lot crazier with my kids around. All of them work, so they'll be in and out of the house, you know. But I don't know, I just love summer vacation. I, I love my kids. I don't mind having them around, you know. I kind of look forward to it. This morning, I got up and made them all breakfast and... Um, can't figure out which side has the glue on it because it's so sticky. Uh, oh. Yeah, I made them all breakfast and um, I don't know, we just had a kind of a fun time chatting together and teasing each other and stuff like that. That is, how did my hands get so sticky again? All right, that's not going to work. Let's try this again. Okay. I, 
have this piece here, but I don't want more of these gray dots right next to each other. I don't want so much, so I'm going to stick this one over on this side to help balance that out so it's appearing somewhere else. And then I'll use something else, maybe just a little bit of the, the gray without the dots. on that, that part there. Well, this glue really works, you guys. <laughs> It'll glue your fingers to the page as well, but it works. Yeah, no, seriously, I haven't had any issues with anything lifting off or whatever, so it does work really well. There we go. Let's tear that a little bit smaller. But yeah, I'd love to hear what kind of plans you guys have for summer. I don't really have um, any big plans necessarily. I just want to try to take things a little bit easier, spend time outside on the deck, reading, um, you know, maybe go down to the lake. We live right by on Lake Erie, very close, half hour away. So maybe some trips there to walk the dog and spend some time together but um yeah no big plans necessarily i don't think we have any trips or anything like that i'm going to start adhering now my focal pieces now um definitely i would love to do some hikes but that's always tricky because with everybody working now it it's really hard to find a day when everybody's off so we'll see. Last summer was, I think, the first summer that we didn't really do any. It just never worked out. Um, but we love going on hikes together as a family with the dog. Just kind of exploring, you know, things that are, you know, within an hour or two from us or so. And just kind of seeing what else is out there. So we don't have any specific plans. I'm going to try to leave just a little bit of a gap, like I said, because of that issue, just so that there's um, no cracking in my bookcase later on. But yeah, leave me a comment down below and let me know what your plans for summer are. I would love to hear them, hear what you guys have going on. Do you have any plans for trips or um, maybe like just... Um, goals for yourself? Do you have like a, a, a reading goal or anything like that or like a project goal? I just really want to, besides you know maintaining my regular YouTube schedule and everything like that, um, I would love to be able to read more. I think I get to read more in the summertime just because the days are longer and so I can finish in time where it's still light enough to be able to go outside and sit on the deck. I love to read outside. That's love that. Okay, my camera battery just died, so I have no idea when it just shut off. I don't know if it just happened or if I missed a whole bunch, but I'm just going to keep going. <sighs> I hate it when that happens. I really need a different camera, but that's not on the budget right now. But anyway, um, I was talking about reading and how I was hoping to get to 100 books this year and um, how I think reading just really gives you a lot of empathy for other people because you are seeing their world from their perspective and in a way that you could never experience because we only have one life. We only have our own experience. And I think I'm going to, I have to tear this, I have to carefully peel this back to see if this girl is going to fit. Because if it is, I'm going to have to move it over a little bit because they don't both fit there. So I'm just trying to be really careful not to rip it. Okay. Let's see. Do I want her there? I don't know. I think she does add something, guys. I think she does. Let's 
it's going to cover up this little book and everything, but that's okay. Um, I think I'm going to add her. Like I said, it's another character, another perspective, and that's my favorite thing about reading is just getting to walk in someone else's shoes for a little bit and go and see other things and know what it's like to live their experience. I don't know. Maybe that sounds kind of dumb, but that's just, that's what I love about reading so much, you know, especially when I was a kid and I don't know when things were tough and I just really needed to escape my situation. Uh, books were always there for me, you know, I could always get away in a book, disappear from life for a little bit, and even though I love my life now and don't need to disappear, I still just love that feeling of escaping into another world, even if it's my own world, you know, even if it's set here and now or whatever. Okay, that's coming together. I really, really like this. Now, do I want this over here or with the typewriter? Maybe over here? I think maybe over here. All right. Make sure that, that is really, really well adhered. And then we'll stick it down here. I don't want it to overlap too much of the typewriter, but there we go. Stick it right there. So mine are actually up on the top. I have the top of my bookshelf decorated. I have um, a typewriter here, a vintage one, and another vintage one here. The one on this side actually looks very similar to this one. And then in the center I have some plants, and in front of the plants I have my collection of vintage inkwells. So yeah, I think this one really represents my life and things that are happening right now. So even though it's very different from <laughs> the spring vibes that I had going on, um, I think it accur accurately represents me and my life. And yeah, I'm really loving it actually. The only thing I don't care for is this here. So I think I need one more little scrap of something in there. Maybe that. Oh, do I want? No, that's too much of that dotted. Okay, so we'll just stick this. And I wish I could peel it up so that, can I slide it under? No, but I can kind of make it but up to that. There we go. All right, so I'm going to clean my hands off and then I'm going to grab some gesso and start to get everything kind of incorporated together. All right, so I am going to use some gesso now and I'm using the Pro Art Gesso, which I will have linked down below. And I'm just going to take a little bit here with my finger and today it's not going to be nearly as much because a lot of our um, focal images have covered up most of the background. But I just want to kind of soften the edges between some of these things and kind of incorporate them together a little bit more and just make everything look like it belongs together and not so disjointed with all these little scraps of paper and everything. I want it to be one art piece and um, so I'm just gonna just make everything a bit more blended and not so bold like a lot of this black lettering like I want it to be there I want you to see the book loft but I you know maybe we'll take down a little bit of it and um, just soften it and if I get too much on there I can just remove it with my finger 
you could use a brush if you don't like getting your hands dirty. That is totally fine. Um, I just kind of prefer getting in there and I like the control that I get with my fingers. Um, maybe like a little bit right in there, but not too much. Right in here where these two pieces meet for sure. See how that's just kind of like muting it down a little bit? You can absolutely still read it, but it's just a little bit less in your face. So that's kind of what I'm going for. And again, over here, I still want you to be able to see the words fiction, um, you know, but I just want it to be less obtrusive, if that makes sense. in this corner here. Just trying to make sure that the focal images, you know, they're going to come forward as the background starts to blur a bit. So that's what I want. I want the your eye to be drawn to the things that I want to showcase, you know. So Let's see here, anything else? Maybe a little bit down in here. Between um, where she her hand is and the stack of books is. Not on her hand though. Maybe a little bit here. Just kind of, I'm just looking for any transitions that kind of are still catching my eye as I kind of scan across the page. Anything that is just like a little bit too bold. But I think that's about it because like I said, um, a lot of this is the focal images and I don't want to soften those. You know, I want you to see them. So... All right, I think that's good. So this stuff dries super fast. I'm gonna wash my fingers again, and by the time I get back, it should be dry. We'll move on to the next step. All right, so normally my next step would be to add a layer of clear gesso because I want to prime the page for what I want to do next. But today, I, since I wanted to try using the Faber-Castell Artist Pens, I actually need a non-porous surface to get them to glide a little bit better on the page like I want them. So I'm gonna use matte medium instead. So I'm just gonna grab a brush and I'll probably just pour it directly onto the page. This is really old. I haven't used it in a really long time, so hopefully um, it's still good. But I think I'm just gonna squirt a bit out onto the page, and then I'm gonna make sure that I coat everything in a nice thin layer so that everything is really well sealed. adding a bit more where I think it needs it making sure I really get the edges and also this crease in here as well okay I'll do the same for this side really working it into that crevice and then just taking that up and down the page until everything is coated Okay, all right, I'm going to heat set that and I'll be right back. Okay, so that is dry now and I'm gonna go to these Faber-Castell artist pens 
And let's see. Hmm. I normally don't like to use brown. I'm just not a brown person, but I think it might be the right color for what I want. So I'm going to test it out here just a little bit. Just add a little bit here. Yeah, I think that's the color I need. So what I'm trying to do is make my focal images come forward even more. So I'm creating like a shadow around them by just drawing that line and then smudging over it with my finger. Now, if I had not laid down that layer of matte medium, you wouldn't be able to smudge this. Um, you could still lay down the medium, but you wouldn't be able to smudge it like I'm doing. So that's why I used that. So I'm just gonna go like all around these details, also where they overlap. You know, or I want this this um, feather quill to look in front of the typewriter. So that also needs to have a bit of shadow around it. And then over on this side. Yeah, like I said, I'm normally not a brown person, but this does have really vintagey vibes. So I think this is the right shade for what I need here. I think black maybe would have been too harsh. It's a little bit tricky in these areas where they're kind of overlapping, but I'm just trying to do my best to make sure that they come forward. Okay. I'm going to be extra careful with the kitty because I don't want to, the brown to really smudge on her fur. And just as I said it, I did it. <laughs> but I'm going to just try my best. It's been a really long time since I've worked with pens like these. Um, I did use them a couple times for mixed media projects. Not this particular set, but uh, similar similar marker, they were pit artist pens, so they were, I think they were fatter maybe, I'm not sure, but anyway, it was a, a different set of them. So I have used them before and knew, you know, that I needed, what I needed to do for them to work, but um, I don't know where I was going with that. It's been a very long time. I think that's what I was trying to say. It's been a very long time since I've worked with them. So, you know, it's not gonna be completely perfect, but that's all right. Nothing ever is in life, is it? I think you only have a certain amount of time with these too. So that's why I'm only doing like just you know, a little bit at a time, kind of working my way around the images a little at a time. And not, you know, just like outlining the entire thing and then not being able to smudge it out. Okay, let's see. This is kind of overlapping her sleeve a bit. her. So I'm just working my way around nice and slow, not getting too ahead of myself. Do you see how that's just kind of lifting the images a little bit up off the page, kind of giving them a little bit more prominence there? All right. So I 
think that's about it for that. Hmm. I'm really not loving the brown though. Like I said, I'm just really not a brown person. I think I might try a little bit of black and just see if it'll help kind of gray it out a bit. I really don't want like a black outline necessarily because I don't want it to be so harsh. But I think that might be doing what I need it to. Just creating a little bit more shadow, but not such like a, a brown shadow. That one got a little bit away from me there. My fingers are getting a little smudged. So it's hard to have a clean finger to work with. Okay. Switch to a different finger. I'm not loving that, how black that got there and there, but maybe I can add a little bit of something over top. Yeah. I do like that better though, as long as I don't, you know, make it too wide. Ooh, that one got a little bit wider, so. Hmm. I need to just use the very tip of my pen and not use so much ink, I guess. But it's giving me a little bit more definition, which is what I wanted. Okay. All right. So, are any of you guys readers? I would love to know. And if you are, like, if you could tell me, like, what is the book you are most excited about reading this summer? I love getting book recommendations. I really, really enjoy that so much. And I would love to be able to add some new books to my TBR. I'm really in the mood for a little bit lighter reads. Um, my favorite genre is historical fiction, definitely, and I read a lot of World War II and um, other eras as well. Just anything historical is my favorite, but I feel like in the summer I just am craving a little bit of a, a more lighthearted read, or at least that's how I'm feeling right now. I'm still interspersing historical fiction in with it because I just can't help it. I love that genre so much. But um, if you have some lighter reads, not like fluffy, like I'm not really into um, what used to be classified as like chick lit or anything like that, but just, I don't know. I still like there to be some meat to the story, I guess I would say but um, just something that's not so, uh, maybe like for example, I really love the book, Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. A couple years ago I read that, that was a really nice, um, it's not a lighthearted read exactly, but you know what I mean, like it's not, it still has had deep themes, but it wasn't so um, war torn, I guess. So my camera stopped yet again. <laughs> And that's the hazard with these longer videos is that I can't see when that's happening because my camera actually sits above my head when I'm filming. Um, but anyway, I know that I want to have some more definition on the outer parts of the page, but I don't think that I want it to be black or brown because I feel like it's getting a little bit heavy and I wanted it to be a little bit lighter. So I think I might add in some of 
my gelatos. So I have these two shades here, sorry, um, that I think would go really well, the Tanzanite and the Amethyst. So I think I'm going to add a bit of that around these edges just to kind of add a border that um, hopefully will pull everything together. So I'm just kind of picking a few places here and there and I'll place it down and then just kind of smudge it with my fingers like I did with the Pit Artist pens. And I did add my uh, parchment paper between them now because I got some of the um, multimedia onto the back page there so I had to dry that and then um, remembered that I should have those in there to keep those pages separate anyway. I'm going to come in here kind of get rid of some of that white and just continue. Oh man, I hope I didn't lose too much. Uh, I was probably talking up a storm to nobody because my camera was probably off. I hate that feeling because now I have to continue and not really know like what I already talked about and that's really frustrating but it is what it is. So anyway, let's just, I want to also add a little bit of color in here to kind of eliminate some of this white paper because I feel like it really stands out quite a bit and I'd like to minimize some of that so just come in here and just let it you know color it a bit it doesn't have to be completely but I think that feels more incorporated now maybe a little bit more in here as well And these are iridescent, so it has just a bit of a shimmer tone to it, which I find really pleasant. Let's see if I can put something in that core there too, so it's not so white where I had that gap. It's kind of hard to get in there, but just so it's not so completely white. Maybe just a touch more of this one in here. I feel like that would be nice. Yeah, I like that. Maybe we'll add a bit of that in that crack as well. I'll try to smooth it in into there and not onto the books and things. I really love a bookshelf like this that has all those little bits and you know, the globes and all of that too. I like to mix things up on my bookshelf as well. All right, let's see. I think I want to add in, just double checking that my camera is still recording, um, a little bit of black gel pen in here in just a few places, just to outline things a bit and create even more definition. Um, not a ton, but just a bit here and there. Just kind of emphasizing things where I feel like they could use, see how this, this cat is kind of fading into the bookshelf a bit. So just giving him a little thin outline in black is going to help lift him off the page. I'll also bring that across his tail. This pen is not really writing well. Okay. Maybe a bit around the bookshelf. And I don't have to be like too precise. It can be kind of sketchy. I think that adds to the overall look of it. Here, I feel like the top of this, and uh, maybe like the inner part, could be a bit more defined. Where 
this book crosses over in front of her legs. That would be a good place. extra lines in her hair just whatever it just kind of adds a little bit of extra texture and interest gives it more of that hand-drawn look there maybe even just a little bit of separation between these little books Doesn't have to even be the whole way across, but you know, just part of it. Let's see, anything else? I mean, I could do all the books on the shelves, but I feel like that would just take forever. So, I'm not going to do them all, but maybe just a few here and there. Just make sure that, that is working. Any place where I feel like they're like less defined, maybe. See that one I kind of got out of the lines, but I'm not going to worry about it too much, you know. probably good. Maybe a few up here. This one is really soft as well. Okay. All right. Well, I think I'm going to look for a title now. So I'm going to use my Tim Holtz Small Talk stickers as usual. So I'm going to flip through and see what I might like to use today. All right, so I think I'm going to go with kind of like what I was talking about before. Hopefully that part was in the video. Um, but how the reason that I love books because they take you on adventures and let you travel to other times and places and worlds. So I think I'm going to do Let Life Surprise You. Um, do more than exist. It's kind of kind of going on with the graduation theme as well for my son and kind of how I'm feeling as well in this kind of transition time as my children are growing up and you know moving on with their lives. And there was something else on this page and so the adventure begins. Okay, let's see. So, let's see. Do more than exist. Let life surprise you. I don't want this one down here. I don't want to, I hate to cover up the books, but I feel like um, in balance it would be cool down here. Maybe there. That way I'm only covering up kind of one book and then part of the shelf. making sure that's on there straight. There we go. There we go. Do more than exist. Let life surprise you. And so the adventure begins. I think that's fitting because that's what books are to me. You know, it's more than just your ordinary life. It's an extraordinary life or lives that you get to live. And there's always a surprise. 
and this pen is just not working anymore and it's always an adventure so I think I need to switch pens so let me try this micron pen that's working much better just outlining that to emphasize the sentiment There we go. All right, so all we need is a date. So let me do that. And I'm gonna use some archival ink from Ranger. So let's see, I have no idea where to put it. Here? Or should I go like up here maybe? Maybe up there for something different. I've always done it at the bottom of the page, but I don't see why I can't change it up, right? <laughs> it's my art journal, right? I can make my own decisions. All right, today is June 7th, so let me change that to June. I can keep the seven, go back to the zero. There we go. So I'm gonna ink that up. Maybe I'll put that under my book to just get it a little more support. Okay, so the seven didn't go because we have too many layers probably underneath, but everything else stamped out pretty well. So I'm just gonna take my pen and add in that seven. Okay. All right, I thought I was done, but I realized I really wanted some black splashes. So I'm just gonna use some black soot distress oxide ink and I press that onto an acrylic block. Added a little bit of water and I'm gonna mix that up with my paintbrush and actually, I think I'm going to just cover up the kitty and the girl's face and hands. <laughs> so, all right. I'm gonna tap that off the edge. And I think that's plenty there. Just enough to give it a little extra something. All right, so that is going to finish up this month's art journal spread. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel for new art journaling videos every month, plus plenty of card making videos all throughout the month. So. All right, I'll see you guys real soon. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.